I'm Harry Clark and I am the winner of the Traitors Series 2. I've teamed up with Take 5 in a battle against scammers and fraudulent activities. But hear me out. I just want to ask you how things have been going after your win. You got your podcast with Paul now going. You're doing yeah. your 75 part. How's that? Yeah, I know. Oh, mate, I, I mean, honestly, it's unbelievable. It's like, I always say this, that like, if I was given a notebook, like a piece of paper and a pen, and they said, at the start of the Traitors, write in it what's the best possible outcome to come from this in like six months time, I would have got nowhere near close to what I've done, you know, like, I mean, I've been invited around a Palm Royale party with Amanda Holden and places like that. And I've taken my family and my friends and it's just been a dream that's come true that I can never have dreamt because it was way too out of reach. Imagine dreaming of a dream that you can't dream because it's too far out of reach. And then that happening, that's how insane and crazy good it's been. Obviously coming into this world now, uh, into the media sort of, scene i guess uh coming from the army it's very uncharted waters so it's like i didn't really know what to do and obviously i signed to inter talent big up inter talent because they're amazing and the one thing we agreed on was that i wanted to do things that meant something to me so like everything i do now is sort of my profile is everything that i believe in and again i mean i was tricked by a ford star so the trickster was tricked um i tried buying some football tickets for about 300 pounds of some guy off instagram uh, he was rushing me, rushing me. And then suddenly once I had sent the 300 pound, the tickets went up to 600 pounds. So I had to send another six, another 300. And that's when it was just like, whoa, this was too much. And then obviously Take Five got in touch and they've run a campaign now about teaching people and giving them the knowledge of what scams look like and what forging activity looks like. Um, and for me, it's like, all I want to do is help people. So the way I felt once I was a victim of that, I didn't want anyone else to feel. So that's why I'm now here working with them. Imagine it's my little brother or my little sister and they could have seen me, oh, Harry's going to do this. Oh, what's that about Harry? And I tell them, it's like, well, imagine I did do that and then they went and got scammed. I'd never be able to live with myself. I'd be like, oh, what an idiot. What an idiot. Like, what, what a bad big brother. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, now I just feel like I said, Uncle Harry, like I was trying to help everyone. Obviously working with Take 5, it's very easy to spot a, a scammer, which it doesn't seem like it is at the time because when it happened to me, you're so busy and it feels like there's so much stuff going on that you have to put in your personal details. But the main message is to just stop. Just take a minute, take a break, stop and think, should I be giving this account or this person? Should I be giving, putting into this website my bank details or my personal information? Does it make sense? And obviously the three simple mess messages that we're trying to get across is stop, obviously challenge. So challenge, is this person rushing me? If I do it tomorrow, would I still get the same thing out of it? Or are they like, it has to happen now. So challenge it and then protect. Obviously, if you are a victim of fraud, go to your bank and go to the fraudulent apartment. Like I said, the best way to catch a scammer or a liar is their sort of moods, they're, they're like switches. I mean, a scammer will be very on to you. Like, this has to happen now, just the same as a liar, because if you leave it too much time, you might detect that that person's a liar. So they need to get the lie off or they need to murder you quickly before you find out it's them. I think the hardest thing for me is, again, obviously I'm living from a personal experience. What's happened to me, I felt so embarrassed. Like I didn't even go to my bank and tell him what had happened. I didn't even tell my dad because I was just like, he's gonna, he's just gonna say to me, how did you not realize? Like, why did you not take a minute to understand what was going on? And I felt so embarrassed. And that's why now I'm working with Take Five because I don't want people to feel like that, you know? This could be your last little bit of money and you see a, a cool deal or something that seems too good to be true and normally it is when it seems too good to be true sometimes it is too good to be true and that may be your last bit of money it's gone and then you've got to do christmas or the next holidays off of nothing and that can be the worst feeling in the world i mean i don't really know how to explain it i've, I've teamed up with take five to obviously help people but again the trick start is helping people not get tricked so i'm sort of becoming this villain that everyone thinks i was in the castle and turning it into a hero and again, I'm just here with Take 5 to try and help people. So, yeah. Were you ever vilified by the public after you came? No, no, no. I was actually quite happy with how I came across because I think ever, a lot of people realised I was only there to better my life and my family's life. I was there to win the money and that was it. You know, I was never there. I'm not a horrible person. I love to think I'm a nice person anyway. Hopefully, Anna and my family can agree with me on that. But yeah, I like to think of myself as a nice person. I went there trying to do it for my family. And again, that's what I do all of this for on top of that. So. Yeah, the public, I think, seen that and how I came across on TV and it was an amazing reception and an amazing response. And everyone still thinks I'm faithful and I do it myself. So 
yeah, I think I played a good game. Take Five have done a load of research. So they've done um, their own surveys and they found that 50% of people are worried about scams. So there's people out there who don't know enough about scams or knowledge. Um, three and five of the survey have said over the summer holidays that they've had scam attempts. So just over these summer holidays, people have been scammers coming to them. And then one in eight, so that's 12% of them people have had more than one. So there's people who are out there now who have had two scams come across three, four, how many ever it is in emails. And we're just out there trying to give that knowledge. So if you are scared, search up the Take Five campaign, get the knowledge, fight back the scammers, take your stand. Because obviously that's not what I, I didn't do that. If I just replied saying, and when I did, the person started getting really aggy. And then it's sort of like, whoa, and then you just sort of, that's where you make the wrong move. So make a stand, think about it and just stop. Remember the three simple steps that Uncle Harry is going to tell you about. Stop, challenge and protect, it's that simple. Your celebrity traders wish list. It's so difficult because everyone I think of, I'd love to, like everyone I've met, I'd love them to go in the castle and sort of experience for it for himself. I've said number one has to be Amanda Holden. I was trying to get her to do it uh, when I was speaking to her the other day. I was like, come on, you got to do it. I'll teach you how to be the best trader ever. But she said she doesn't really fancy it because she just can't lie. A lot of people say this, they can't lie, they'll just laugh. Once you're there, you don't understand it. It's like, I thought I couldn't lie and like, look at what happened. So it's like you go there and you can't expect what, what comes of it. So I'd have to say my number one, Amanda Holden. I'd love to see Ant and Deck in there. I know Paul and I spoke to him at the Brits, at the BAFTAs. We spoke to him and they said they loved the show, which again is absolutely mental because Ant and Deck have seen me and Paul on screen. Um, so I'd love to see them two in it. I'd love to see the reverse. I think I'd love to see the Uno reverse card of putting Claudia into the actual castle as a contestant instead of the presenter, I think that would be quite cool to see how she does. Um, and then one more, maybe Tyson Fury, because that would just be a load of laughs if he, was, if he was in the castle. I always say this, and I know it sounds absolutely mental, you have to make friends in there. So the best advice is sort of trust people, even though the whole game is about trust. And obviously, if you trust wrong, it can go wrong. But you have to have people in there that you can bounce off and sort of protect you because You've got to think if you go onto that table, round table, and there's 21 other contestants against you, if it's just you on your own, you're going down no matter what your argument is. But if you have a little group of friends that you all sort of trust each other, they can support you, back you, and then they say, oh, I don't think it's so-and-so supporting you, but I think it's someone else. And then everyone sort of targets that person. So the best advice is to gain a little bit of trust, gain a little friendship circle, have popularity, but not too much, this is the most difficult thing with the traders, right? Because the best way to explain it is you have to give enough emotion, not too much, not too little. So you have to find that perfect medium and it'll be the same in making friends. As a faithful, I reckon I would have just given up because I had said I couldn't have gone there um, not being a traitor and I didn't want to either. So yeah, but definitely Paul would have been on my radar before I would be coming to you.